rules that we have decided upon. And then when someone violates those rules, that person is a violator and mm -hmm. that person needs to be judged and dealt with mm -hmm. because of that. I think we have this sort of moral righteousness when it comes to uttering certain words or doing certain things. And the, the good thing about the the judgment that comes out of that and the inner is is conversations it's like people start having conversations like wh what is the difference why is it different mm -hmm. like what are you allowed to say what are you not allowed to say and mm -hmm. why you know it's interesting with with the n-word controversy that that happened here right when that was happening i was watching for the first time ever i'm ashamed to admit the five-part oj documentary from espn from <laughs> from a while back it's like it's been on my list to watch for a long time i finally watched it and you'll remember there's this moment in the trial where uh you know it, it's now known that there's probably a, a mark Furman n-word tape you know like this this right. cop that uh, f collect the glove at the scene has a history of using the n-word as a racial slur directing it at, at at people and so forth and chris darden for the pos prosecution with the jury out of the room he looks at the judge he says we cannot allow the jury to hear this tape and here's why black people cannot hear the n-word and remain objective and the jurors they have to remain objective so we can't we can't allow them to hear. We can't admit this as evidence. That's fascinating that he's the prosecuting attorney. Prosecuting attorney made that argument. And then the defense, Johnny Cochran came back on the defense and he said, what the hell are you talking about? The idea that a black person can't hear the N-word in any context and remain rational, remain objective, um, understand the context of it, is patronizing. It's condescending. It's racist. I'm ashamed that you made this argument, right? And... You know, regardless of the merits of it, his Johnny Cochran's view was seen to have sort of won the day among among people, and they did admit um, much of, uh, or at least parts of the tape, and the jury heard the word, and basically the argument was among progressive people at that time in the '90s was it's condescending and patronizing to say that every ex like any example of that word being spoken just like scrambles black people's minds or something. And I think there's been a huge sea change in what the pro progressive argument now is. The progressive argument now is much closer to Chris Darden's point of view that any example of this word being used, whether it's in quotation marks, um, whether you're talking about the word itself, or whether it's being hurled as an insult, it's all the same. It's all so deeply uh, you know, shattering of the the inner psyche of a black person uh, so i just i think we at at minimum we should mark how much has changed there and who was making these arguments back then and who's making them now um and i worry that people are basically circling the wagon on an idea that they haven't really thought through if that makes any sense the darden thing it, I, I get it from a prosecutor's perspective because mm -hmm. he doesn't want them to dismiss this this character in his case, which is Mark Furman, who on top of that also has been accused of planning evidence. Mm -hmm. So there's like a two thing going on with Mark Furman. You're dismissing his validity, first of all, because he's doing something illegal. Mm -hmm. He's planting evidence. Mm -hmm. And then and he might have planted blood too, right? Wasn't that, wasn't, didn't they it think? Was, it was alleged, or it, yeah, people were wondering. And then on top of that, he might have he might have racist perspectives. Mm -hmm. and so like you've got two things going on simultaneously. And then also it's like everybody had seen the Rodney King video. Yes. This was a big part of the OJ case that a lot of people maybe part. have um, forgotten. Mm -hmm. But when people saw that Rodney King video, which is really one of the first viral videos, mm -hmm. and you see Rodney King on the ground and these multiple white cops beating him with sticks, and the fact that those cops no got off. possible reason. It's well, what was the what was the story that he was running from them and he was on PCP or something like that? Like, what was Who the knows? story? Like, why? Uh, you know, I, I don't remember the details, but the you know the as it dragged on and they they keep beating him more and more senseless. Yeah, 
it just becomes more and more obvious that there's there's no reason that they had to beat him that, that much, right? Yeah, yeah. And and they got off. And they got off. And so when OJ got free. off, everybody was like, well, we got that one. Yeah. It was, right. it was a thing where they felt like- It was like, a revenge mindset. Yes. I think that that's very unhealthy, I have to say. I don't think, I mean, listen, it's a cliche that two wrongs don't make a right, but it's a very- it's a very deep cliche. It's a cliche for a reason, and um, like the like the notion that because the cops did something completely unforgivable, horrible to Rodney King and got off for it, and and you know that did prove all of the wider in in you know the wider points about the systemic practices of of the LAPD. That's all valid. The fact that people couldn't separate those true and important points from this other trial about this, you know, this wealthy former football player that quite clearly killed his wife. Um, you know, I think that we have to insist that people be able to think two things at once. I mean, that's just one example of it, but you know, it, it's, it's possible to acknowledge everything true and valid about the Rodney King case and still say, I'm sorry, OJ is guilty. And there weren't that many people, um, certain that, certainly weren't that many black people at the time, it seems, that were really emphasizing that bright line that we can think two things at once here, folks. Yeah. And it doesn't make us look good to conflate the two. It's actually not just. Well, there was a, a real underlying thought that the, the Los Angeles Police Department was corrupt. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just that. It was also the Rampart um, division and there was allegations that cops that were involved in that were also involved in the killing of Biggie mm -hmm. um, So there was there was a lot of shit going on with LA cops where mm -hmm. there was no internet back then So we have to remember back in the day like these discussions were had with people just talking about it at a bar or over the dinner table and no one had like real data to pull from and there was no like real investigative journalism that was being done where you could show it. I remember the Rolling Stone 